trying one thing, tomorrow it might actually work and it might do something different. The other thing is too is that I know everybody's read this, uh, the tech document out there, freeze your hard drives, try to blah, 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 those kind of things. Uh, a lot of the times it will work, but your problem is when you freeze a hard drive is that you've got condensation problems almost immediately after you start that hard drive up. So you've got like 10 minutes if you're able to read the drive. If you're not, you probably shot most of your chances of trying to get that data back anyway because it'll just further damage the drive. Most drives are hurt by any kind of humidity or condensation that's on the platters, hits the heads, and it's ruined it. I would say that if you cool it instead, maybe down to 45 degrees, it seems to work a little bit better. One of the ways that I've been doing this is uh, if you guys are familiar with a Pelter cooling system at all, some of them are used for some CPUs and things like that. What's that? Okay. <laughs> the, these things typically cost like $50. Basically, it's a ceramic piece that on one side will read the heat off of whatever item that you're touching and spit it off on the other side. So it makes one side cold and the other side warm. There's, a, there's this particular thing that just came out that's one of these uh, USB, plug it in, and it cools your drink while you're sitting around at your computer. If you take it apart, this thing's only 20 bucks. And if you take it apart, this thing's got this particular ceramic in it. You can take off all the pieces except for the ceramic and the heat sink, and you can strip off the label of your hard drive, put this on top of it, and let it sit for a couple of hours, and it will cool the casing off enough that it will stay somewhere close to 45 degrees when you plug it in and you get it running. It will typically go up a little bit, but you'll still hit something in the neighborhood of 60 degrees while it's running. And you may actually be able to go directly after the software, mount it, go directly to what you want to get. Now, one of the things I can tell you about a damaged hard drive and you got damaged sectors is that when you're doing a copy, you don't want to go get three or four or five things. You want to go find the one piece, one at a time, and be very surgical about it and go after exactly what you're looking for. So if you went and got your, your JPEG files because your hard drive's working, you're thinking you're fine, and then you go over and you get your uh, QuickBooks files, well, since the head's going to have to move more back and forth while the hard drive is mounted, you have a better chance of damaging it further and not getting any of that data back. So take your time and go one step at a time and copy out individual components as you can. And then go back and get the other ones that are less important. It would be terrible if you went and you got your grandma's JPEGs and she really wanted her Quicken files. So time is not your friend in that case. You want to get it as fast as you can and you want to go just after those components. Free space is your friend. If you started doing a copy and you actually got it mounted and you were able to do a copy, you if you had that drive die while you're doing the copy, you don't want to go back the second time you start it back up if you're able to read it again and copy over the same files that you have. You want to have a lot of free space. You also sometimes want to have as much space as you can to do an image because when it mounts in the OS, if you can't copy those files out, sometimes it doesn't mean you can't get an image. And if you get an image of the file, then you can go and process it on another hard drive or do something else with it completely separately and not have to worry about whether or not there's bad sectors on it because you're on a new device at that point. There's a lot of software that will carve out different independent pieces. One of the, one of the pieces of software that I like a lot is called NTFS Explorer. It's made by a company called Runtime.org. And I don't work for them or anything, um, but it is one of the better packages because if you're doing an NTFS recovery for Windows, you can skip most of the other files. It'll actually go in, read the MFT. It'll give you your sectors back. You can go back and find the exact cluster where your data is, and you can drill down to that particular directory and copy out just the piece you need and skip all these other bad sectors of the OS and things that you might not need. A lot of data recovery programs don't do that. A lot of them will scan the whole hard drive, come back and build you a list, and then throw it out. But they're not taking into account that it may die in the process of scanning this hard drive and trying to go through that whole thing when it hits a sector that's bad further down the line. So I try to be as surgical as possible and get those things down. Heat is not your friend. We kind of went over that already. Do not uh, try not to freeze your hard drive. You could refrigerate your hard drive. You could try that. Just do anything to try to keep that condensation down. But one of the things that happens to metal when it gets hot, when it's starting to spin up, is it expands. 
So if your head is only floating two one millionth of an inch over the platter, if it expands, it will sometimes hit the, hit the head at that point in time. So the cooler you can keep it, the better off you're going to be. Some of the only hard drives I know that use the glass platters, which will happen a little bit less from a standpoint of expanding and hitting the heads, that's typically going to be like the Hitachis, the IBM hard drives, things along that line. Everybody on eBay is your friend because you are going to look up every hard drive you can. You're going to email those guys, find out what the model number is and the date to go get that board. So you want to try everything you can before you open the case. And I'm going to show you what the inside of some of this stuff looks like. The big thing is on the logic board itself, on the IDE controller board on the bottom of the hard drive, heat is the big problem because a lot of times you'll be able to touch the board in a certain spot and you'll be able to feel where it's overheating. Sometimes when you take it off, you can actually see where it's burned through the chip or done something else. Uh, different types of connectors make a big difference sometimes. Sometimes moving from an IDE connector to a USB connector, you're actually able to mount it on another device a lot easier and you would be amazed at the number of times I could just plug one in from a USB device into a firewire and it actually work and get past that problem. So that can help you get past some of the basics before you actually have to open the drive even if there's sector problems. Different OS's make a big difference. Nopix is actually really great for trying to go after those files because it opens almost anything and you can have a driver for almost any type of RAID controller or anything already on the drive. Um, Mac OS like I described already you can Stick that on a Windows box with Mac disk. Sometimes just taking the hard drive, flipping it over, flipping it upside down, plugging it in, and waiting a little while actually works too. You may actually see that it will mount in Windows, but it will show you that there's no known type of file system on it. Those are the times that you want to image the drive. Because if you can image it, you can skip all those other problems because it basically means that there might be damage on the drive, but it's affected something that's going to tell it that NTFS is on this drive or FAT's on this drive or Linux is on this drive. If you see it mount on there, just go straight for an image and just skip all the other stuff that you can. Use as many fans, everything else that you can. The electronics, this is what it will look like when you go to look at these chips and look at the board. And this is very simplistic to replace, like I said, with four screws. This happens a lot. I see a lot of boards that once you take it off, you flip it over. Like I said, this is the 10% of the other problem that I can't read. I've got to go find that board. I will find either something burned through the chip or some spot where something burned up. Head crash. Typically, it doesn't fall off like that, but it can. <laughs> Usually it'll hang there and sometimes do some platter damage along the way. But if you've got some heads that look like this, where there's actually head damage, the platter was actually pretty good. I was actually able to deal with the platter once I replaced the heads. So this is the basics of how I have to do this. There are no tools for trying to replace heads on the platter. So what you've got to do is build your tools out of paper. And Believe it or not, this is the best way to do it. You take little pieces of paper and you fold them up so that there's enough resistance that they push back and forth and you slip it in. Now, it's a little more complicated than this from a standpoint of lining it up. I'll show you a picture of that in a second. And if you're lucky enough, some drives have this ramp on them. And the ramp is really cool because it'll help you line up the heads when you get them back on there because you cannot be off on these heads. So you need to take your time when you move this component to another drive. So you find the other drive, you take the other stuff out, you go ahead and have it ready, and you go ahead and disassemble this part. You slowly pull these out, making sure that your paper is stuck there and keeps them apart. And then you will go ahead and move it over. Now, this takes about two hours of time once you're good at it. So I'm thinking three or four, but it can be a lifesaver. And once you do it a couple of times, you'll have it down. So if you want to start your own recovery business, there you go. <clears throat> Again, you've got to pull these parts exactly from the same drive, same manufacturer. Everything's got to be exactly the same. This is what the piece of paper looks like when it's stuck in there, and it keeps those heads apart. Those heads cannot touch. If they do touch, then you have a mess, and it will not work. But typically, you can do this. I've done it up to three sets of heads, six heads altogether. I've never been successful at more than that so far. But that's what it looks like when they slam together. And once they slam together, the head itself is actually mounted at the end of the slider down here. 